Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Robin Lewis. I'm a naturopathic physician practicing here in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And today I wanna to talk to you about one of my all-time favorite herbs that I use for many, many different things. But I'm gonna to talk to you specifically about how I use it for blood sugar regulation, type two diabetes, and potentially for weight loss. It has a rich history of use in medicines like Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, and other traditional medicines around the world. And today I am talking to you about berberine. But first, I hope that you're aware of how important it is to regulate your blood sugars. And if you aren't, please keep listening because around 50% of the population here in North America has a blood sugar issue. So for example, they estimate around 30 to 40% has prediabetes and around 11% has type two diabetes, whether you're diagnosed or not. And to quickly clarify what prediabetes is, is that's referring to when your blood sugars are on the higher end of normal, but not yet high enough to be classified as diabetic. So basically these people are on a fast track to developing diabetes, specifically type two diabetes very soon, but they're not quite there yet. And so this population is around half of the population. And you could argue that everyone should be regulating their blood sugars because this affects so many people and is just important for our overall health to have balanced blood sugars. But for people who don't fall into these categories, that's usually very achievable through lifestyle measures like eating right, sleeping well, exercising, managing your stress, and so on. And for those of you who are curious about the diet component, I did do an entire episode on my version of a blood sugar balanced diet and some of the key principles that go into that. So if you're curious, please give that a watch. But the point I'm trying to make here is it's not necessary for everyone to go on berberine for blood sugar regulation, but if you do fall into the category of prediabetes or type two diabetes, this is something that you may wanna consider. Okay, so now let's dive into why berberine could be helpful for your blood sugars and potentially weight. Now there are a few different ways or mechanisms in which berberine is helping manage your blood sugars. And the first one that they believe is responsible for a lot of those actions is related to something that the drug metformin, which is the most commonly prescribed medication for type two diabetes, these two share this mechanism, which is super fascinating. So berberine alongside metformin are supposed to be acting on something called AMPK. AMPK, when increased inside the cells, will help improve glucose uptake, so pulling those sugars out of the blood and improving the actions of insulin, which is our hormone that also does this. And so when blood sugars rise, insulin is released to help stop them from getting too high. And how it does that is by putting that sugar away into tissues like your muscle and your liver. And so this brings me to another quick little side note, which is how important it is to have enough muscle mass because this is essentially a place to put sugars. And so from a blood sugar standpoint, this is why increasing your muscle mass and really prioritizing strength training and things like that is very helpful. Berberine really seems to help the efficiency of the uptake and to resensitize that cell to insulin, which is a big issue in people who are diabetic. So these people are often what we call insulin resistant, which essentially means that your body doesn't respond to insulin the way it should or used to. And so when you are young, you would have to release a certain amount of insulin to combat those spiking blood sugars, say after you ate a pastry, a candy, whatever, something high in sugar, the insulin is released to put that away. 
Now, the more you head down this pathway, the more and more insulin you need to release to accomplish the same thing. Hence, the resistance to insulin. Your body isn't responding to the same amount and you need to release more and more of it. So this is classic of this population and berberine alongside many other beautiful therapies will help mitigate this and improve the sensitization back to where we want it to be so that you don't need to release as much insulin. It's also super interesting because I'm seeing a lot of people online talking about berberine and calling it nature's ozempic, which is another diabetes medication, also very well known for its weight loss capabilities. Now, as I just mentioned, berberine actually behaves a lot more similar to metformin and ozempic and metformin both can help with type 2 diabetics, but in very different ways. And so I get the comparison in the sense that berberine and ozempic are both used for insulin and for people who have blood sugar issues, but the way it's doing it is entirely different. And if we're trying to compare the two from a weight loss perspective, it's not really a fair comparison at all. So whenever you have too much insulin in the body, it does put you into more of a fat storage mode and makes it harder for you to lose weight. So berberine along all of these insulin sensitizing therapies could be helpful for weight loss in that scenario. But what it doesn't do is suppress your appetite in the same way that Ozempic does. Ozempic will really shut off those hunger cues and that's why you see a lot more weight loss with those type of medications which fall under a category of GLP-1 agonist. And again, as a quick aside, I did do an entire video on Ozempic. So if you watch that, it'll become very clear why the two aren't really the same and it's not fair to call Burberry Nature's Ozempic. In fact, it would probably be more appropriate to call it Nature's Metformin. But I did want to clarify that because you can use berberine in the context of weight loss for this type of weight gain, and there's many different types of weight gain, but it's not nearly as dramatic as Ozempic. It also doesn't come with half of the side effects, but I wouldn't say just taking berberine alone is going to create weight loss, or at least not a very dramatic weight loss. And so I don't use it a lot for that. It can have a little bit of a side effect of weight loss, which is nice, but I wouldn't be expecting it to be super dramatic with berberine alone. So even though the berberine isn't suppressing your appetite, it is, however, very good for your gut, which leads me to my second point and the second mechanism in which they believe is responsible for berberine's impact on blood sugars. Now I'm talking specifically about the gut microbiome, which is referring to the different bugs that live inside of our gut. And berberine is incredibly antimicrobial for bad bug overgrowth. So this could be things like unfavorable bacteria, fungi, viruses, different parasites, which I would argue are a lot more common than most people realize. And in fact, gut microbiome balancing is a huge part of my practice because it's so prevalent and I see a ton of it in practice. But the gut microbiome has a heavy role in a lot of different functions inside of the body. Those include things like metabolism and blood sugar regulation. Now, they have even seen this in animals where they link directly the effects of the gut microbiome on the blood sugars and how berberine's direct impact on those bugs inside of the gut are leading to those changes in blood sugars. More specifically, they found that berberine really promoted the growth of a specific type of bacteria that produce something called short chain fatty acids. So these bugs will consume your food and then produce these short chain fatty acids that have been linked to improvements with blood sugar. And so this is just one of the ways that berberine is helping balance out the gut microbiome, which indirectly is helping balance your blood sugars because our gut microbiome plays a huge role in our overall health and berberine is really, really good for it.
Now, these are just two of the key ways in which they're finding berberine is helping with blood sugars. There are other ones that are also being proposed, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a context as to how that berberine is impacting your blood sugars. Now, more importantly, it works. <laughs> so mechanisms aside, there's short-term and long-term studies that show that berberine does affect your blood sugars in a positive way. It will help bring down elevated blood sugars, same with elevated insulin, and I have found really good results with it clinically. Now, is it for everybody? Absolutely not. There is a percentage of people who will get a gut reaction to berberine. So it'll create nausea and tummy upset because they just don't tolerate it very well. So in those people, berberine is probably not a good option and it isn't to be used in pregnancy. So there are nuances here. It's not for everybody. I would never make that blanket statement. And you do really have to take the individual into context and for some people, even if you do tolerate it symptomatically, it might not work for you. But it is one of my favorite herbs for blood sugar balancing, and I do see good results, but do know that it's not for everyone. And then the dosing, I'm not gonna give you a specific number because it is nuanced, but typically in the research, you see being dosed at around 900 to 1500 milligrams a day, with or without food, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. But generally speaking, that's the range of effectiveness for dosing berberine. And it's typically being dosed in like a powdered capsule form. Now with herbal medicine, there's many different preparations. This is the kind of berberine I'm used to using is the powdered form encapsulated but there are other things like tinctures and stuff out there that also require nuanced dosing. So that's all I really wanna say on the use of it because I do really believe that you need to go see a trusted healthcare provider who knows what they're talking about when it comes to these supplements in order to develop a really good treatment plan. But it is something that I think is worth having a conversation about. And I really hope that today helped clarify whether or not this is something that you want to bring up with your doctor. Thank you again for listening. I hope you got value out of today's episode. If you have questions or future topics you'd like me to dive into, please comment them below. Thank you for your continued support. Have a happy, happy new year. And I wish all the best for you in 2024.